Um, but at this time, I'd like to introduce Michelle Stark, the senior photo editor from Men's Health Magazine. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you started, what you've been doing with your life. Um, I moved to New York after school, after college in Boston, and um, I studied uh, liberal arts, but I also loved photography and, and kind of got into studying the history of photography uh, towards the end of school and did a lot of um, internships at various uh, galleries and museums. Um, and I knew I wanted to work uh, with photography in some capacity, but I wasn't sure how. Um, when I got to New York, I kind of realized, you know, I hadn't gone to art school and I was the kind of person who sort of thrived more with having a regular paycheck and a, and a steady job. And um, I sort of just discovered, from, I was temping, and um, they said, well, if you could do anything, you know, what kind of job would you love to have? What would you love to do? And I said, I'd love to work um, in the photo department of a magazine. And they happened to have um, an assignment uh, open at Glamour Magazine. So I started at Glamour in uh, their photo department as an assistant freelancer, which was a great place to, to work at Condé Nast in this huge department with lots of money to spend. This is also in like the year, you know, 2000. So, you know, it was uh, internet money happening and um, it was great. I learned a lot there and I became a photo assistant there and assisted the photo director. And then from there I, um, I moved on and did a little bit of time at a magazine called Colors, which is a Benetton magazine. And then from there I went to Men's Fitness and spent a couple years there and then from there I went to Men's Health. So I've just been doing photo editing for a bunch of years now, about 10 years. And that includes everything from uh, producing and assigning and art directing, photo research, uh, no. Hey everyone, yeah. sorry I lost uh, the audio there. Everybody's telling me that you can hear me. Oh. Unfortunately, I can't hear myself. Oh, there we go. I'm back. I'm, now I can hear you. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. That was totally my fault. <laughs> All right, I assume you talked about yourself. <laughs> I did. I went through the whole like thing. Um, so if this. Yeah, we, we uh, this is sort of indicative of the of of at least one of the styles of photography. This really kind of lifestyle aspirational photo. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of the creation of this photo? Um, yeah, this this is a coworker shoot, but um, this I'm not sure if I'm with you on the uh, layout here, but this the surfer yeah. in Hawaii. Yeah, um, that was I think a story about some what we call real people uh, lifeguards. And we, when we say real people, we mean they're not models and they're not celebrities. They're just guys that sort of epitomize, you know, the men's health lifestyle and, and might look great and be doing something inspirational. Um, and I think, yeah, we had Jeff Lipsky, Lip, Jeff Lipsky excuse me, go out to Hawaii and just shoot these guys, you know, in their natural element, kind of doing their thing and just looking great using, you know, a bright flash and sort of capturing, you know, the energy and the wetness and, and the sky and the land and, and sort of creating these really great inspirational images. Photography and men's health. Um, so uh, for the audience's sake, can you sort of explain the difference between how men's health is positioned vis-a-vis um, -vis something like Men's Fitness or GQ or Esquire or mm -hmm. some of the other men's lifestyle magazines? Sure. Um, well, in general, you know, Men's Health has probably larger circulation than, than all of those magazines. In fact, in, larger than some of them to the, together combined. Our circulation is probably about 1.8 uh, million readers. Um, and we have a very wide readership, whereas a magazine like GQ and Details, they have a smaller readership, and their readership is probably also maybe more left coast, maybe a little more liberal, maybe a little more into fashion. Um, so, you know, our, it's, it's, um, we actually use a lot of the same photographers, but we might use different looking models. You know, our models might be a little, a little bit bigger, just a little more relatable, um, a little less pretty, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with our fashion. It's just a little, and I don't want to say less sophisticated, but maybe just a little less highbrow. Not that our fashion is lowbrow, but it's just somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Um, because we don't want to alienate all of our readers in middle America and all of America, but our readers, you know, for the most part are, you, you know, your average American guy. They're not, they might not be buying, you know, $300 jeans, whereas someone reading details or GQ might very well be buying you know, $300 jeans. And do you think that the, the, the topical difference is sort of reflected in the photography style as well? 
Um, I do, just in the in the sense that you know our models aren't going to, or like our fashion spreads generally, our model's not going to be staring, you know, gloomily out at you, and it's not going to be a very dark aesthetic. Our pictures tend to have a lot of light in them, lightness, a lot of flash. Mm -hmm. um, we use a lot of blue skies in our environmental images. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely think it, it reflects in the photography. We always say not too dark, not too dark. We shoot a lot of our still life on white. We very yep. rarely shoot on black. Things like that definitely reflect. And, and the last bullet point on this particular slide, uh, saying that the photography is not overly digitized or, or retouched, um, is that kind of going for the everyday man aspirational? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I'd say so. You know, we, we certainly have, uh, we retouch our images, but um, we, you know, some photographers, their style is this sort of very hyper real, uh, super retouched kind of look, and that's a very specific aesthetic. We really don't you know, run any images like that. Mm -hmm. um, some some magazines do, and that's a whole other specific thing. And, you know, we retouch our girls, but we always make sure that we do it, you know, tastefully, and we keep them looking very real. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so speaking of uh, girls who look very real, mm -hmm. or, well, she looks pretty good, um, here's a, uh, I guess, kind of a celebrity spread on someone. Right. Mm -hmm. We have uh, these MH Woman one pagers, or actually in this case it was a spread, uh, where we shoot um, usually a, an up and coming an up and coming uh, young female celebrity. And this particular image was uh, was commissioned by you guys, or was it a stock image? This was commissioned by us. Generally, when we are presented with you know these girls as possibilities to run, we always look for pickup imagery pickup, meaning that it's, it already exists. And we look at the stock agencies, and we also will you know, talk to the celebrity publicist to see if anyone might have shot her recently. For the most part, these girls are so new that there doesn't, uh, that kind of art or the quality of art that we want to run doesn't exist yet on them, in which case we will end up shooting them. And sometimes, you know, if it's a one-pager or two-page story to, to save costs, we sometimes will just shoot them very simply in a studio. And it still costs a lot of money, but um, <laughs> right. you know, but, but you know, we and we also, um, you know, this is all about the girl, and so we just like to keep it very, very simple and focus, focus on her. And and when you're thinking about the the budgeting for a given issue, is there a lot of horse trading to say, hey, we couldn't find pickup for this particular girl, so we'll spend X amount of money on this, and we know that we'll have to pare back some of the other feature things that we would normally commission photography for, or can you always find extra budget if you need it? Um, you know, that's a good question. I feel like, you know, we definitely have to be careful, and we do scale back in other areas if we spend a lot um, on, a, on something that, on, a, on pages that don't have that much money allotted to them. In general, when we're planning the issue, we'll, we'll just plan it out accordingly so that, you know, we, tra we do trade off from stories here and there. Um, a lot of times we have photographers shoot multiple stories um, in one photo shoot. Um, right. But right. generally, you know, we, we, we aren't going to run bad images. So in the end, if we have to spend the money, we'll, we'll generally find a way to spend the money. Um, contributing photographers, uh, why don't you take us through some of this, these points um, so we understand your terminology. The well is the meat of the magazine, for example. Mm -hmm. The well is uh, the section in the middle of the magazine where we have what we call our feature stories, which are our longer format stories. Um, those are generally, they can be anywhere from four to six to eight to ten pages. Um, those we run full page photographs and uh, are the you know stories we spend the most money on and usually assign to the, the most, I guess, well-established and well-known photographers. Um, <clears throat> Ten to fifteen shoots per issue. That's usually the norm. Um, they can be, you know, very small photo shoots. They can be large photo shoots. Um, you know, and we do everything from, you know, the still lifes to the sexy girls to the athletes to the cover, etc. Mm -hmm. um, you want me to just keep going through the bullet points? Yeah, and then I guess uh, so. Uh, I mean, that's actually quite a bit of shoots per issue, more than I would have expected. Yeah, it, it depends on the issue. I mean, and sometimes something will come up very last minute. Let's say we're, we're 
done with shoots and uh, you know an editor a story might get cut at the last minute and usually we have actually stories um, sort of in our bank of stories that we can sometimes you know plug in the hole sometimes we have to shoot something last minute and that's another shoot um, but yeah we, we do shoot a lot we have a lot of photo shoots every issue we, we obviously get a lot of questions from people on the on the webinar who are asking well, how do I get to shoot for Men's Health Magazine? Um, your fourth bullet point says, you know, you're using well-known and established photographers. Um, and I know we talk a little bit about how photographers can approach you via email later in the, uh, the webinar, but what, what's the, how, how does a, an up-and-coming photographer or someone who you may not have heard of actually get to be a contributing photographer for the magazine? Is it kind of I luck think... combined with talent? I, I, yeah, that's a, actually a good point. I would say it's kind of luck combined with talent. You know, if a young photographer emails me and actually shows me other work that he's done for smaller magazines, that's actually a kind of a great way for me to, to get my attention because I see that, um, you know, other magazines, smaller magazines are trusting him and hiring him. Um, and that gives me the confidence that, oh, okay, he's on his way or she's on, on her way, you know. Um, and you know, just keeping me updated on on what they're shooting and who they're shooting for, sending um, images within the email, and you know, I do get people calling me sometimes. I generally don't have time to call people back, but you just, you never know. And um, sometimes it's nice to just leave a message and just say, you know, I know you're you're super busy. I I don't expect a call back, but if you happen to have the time, that'd be great. Otherwise, you know, I'll shoot you an email and hope to you know work with you sometime in the future. Because um, I so do the well to messages. <laughs> yeah. I don't always listen to messages, so that's yeah. good to hear. Um, the well is the area in the magazine where you're commissioning most of the shoots. Um, so how are you using uh, the, the pickup and the stock images, and, and what sort of image is sort of typical for that sort of usage? Well, like we use a lot of sort of what we call sexy girl pickup. Um, you know, different area, the ma different the, the, ma the magazine needs a balance of imagery. It needs, you know, a sex, it needs like the sexy images. It needs like images with muscle and body in them. It needs food. So there's a sort of balance of uh, types of imagery. And we have a lot of one pagers or two pagers that have to do with sex and relationships. Um, and in that case, we'll usually pick those up. There's a lot of great stock out there of sexy women or couples. Um, same thing with uh, sports. You know, we pick up a lot of shots of whether it's guys playing soccer, or canoeing, or um, anyone, anyone kind of playing sports, uh, because we have a lot of pages, you know, about that, and we need to show, I guess, lifestyle imagery, you know, of guys doing activities out in the world, having fun, looking great, and we don't generally shoot that stuff, so that's where we usually pick up most of our stock, and then, of course, all the tiny, tiny images that we have in the magazine, whether it's an apple or a garlic clove or right. you know an iPhone. We pick up all of that stuff. Um, iStock is a great resource for simple, clean imagery. Here is a uh, pretty cool uh, picture of a guy at a starting block. Patrick, who, you, uh, who we were talking about yesterday. Um, what, mm -hmm. what do you like about this image? And and how did this shoot come about in terms of? The, the producing, you know, what, what sort of art direction was communicated to the photographer in advance? This shoot, um, yeah, Patrick did this and he's worked with us a lot. He's really, really wonderful um, with athletes in action. Um, and he also has sort of um, a really, really nice sort of palette to his, to his work. Um, it's a little bit desaturated and, and sort of just elegant. Um, and I just, I love this picture because it just it feels like a moment, but like a very strong moment. You know, you can really see the musculature of the guy and there's like sort of almost looks like a stillness there, like it could be dawn or it could be dusk. Um, we have a lot of blue sky in there. We tend to like, um, you know, showing sky in our, in our, image, in our images. Um, and in terms of producing, um, actually one of my coworkers produced this, but, um, you know, he was out in L.A. and... Uh, you know, we sent him, we hooked him up with, you know, some, some models, some athletes, and just, you know, sent him up and set him up on a location and just had him shoot just tons of different scenarios. You know, for our direction, it's just like, you know, get motion, get moments, uh, get different angles. Uh, he's obviously shooting from below, or he's 
obviously very close to the ground, sort of looking up at him, which sort of creates this nice, uh, almost a little bit heroic angle, which we tend yeah. to use a lot in our magazine. So is this a situation, you know, you mentioned that oftentimes when you're commissioning a photographer, they will actually shoot for images that end up being in multiple stories. So was this sort of a mm -hmm. generic, hey, Patrick, go to the track, find, an, uh, find a model athlete, and take some photos with those different emotions and feelings and scenarios? Well, no, no. I mean, we set it all up. I mean, we approved the models. We had a stylist there. It's all very mm -hmm. controlled. Um, very, very controlled. Um, but once all the other elements are controlled, that's when we can give the photographer the creative freedom to just, you know, once everything else is set up, then they can just shoot, shoot, shoot. And yeah. for this particular story, he shot just this one story. But then I think like three months later, we needed um, a really beautiful shot of a runner. And we thought, oh, you know, I wonder if Patrick has anything from that shoot that we could use that's different enough. And, you know, there was. So that was great. And the, you know, we were talking yesterday and you said, uh, you know, having a lot of blue sky, um, is that as much of kind of an emotional and aspirational thing as it is, it cleans up your background when you're you know, shooting low and going into the sky? Yeah, that's, that's a good, good point. I think it's a, for maybe a couple of reasons. I mean, one, as you can see, we always need negative space in these mm -hmm. images for text, which is something that it, it's funny because it's, um, it seems, I don't know, it might be, not be something a photographer could, would remember or a young photographer would, would know, but it's very important to sometimes leave space, leave negative space for words if, if you're shooting for, you know, an editorial client. Um, but yeah, the blue sky, I think, um, you know, we want our readers to look at these images and just be inspired and um, open-minded. And I think that showing, you know, beautiful scenery and, uh, you know, clean backgrounds, you know, inspires that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so more on finding new photographers here. Um, the one thing that we've heard over and over again from photograph uh, from photo editors and DOPs, et cetera, is really don't just send a portfolio without examining the magazine and understanding the type of photography that we're, that you're actually using. And that's something mm -hmm, that, that we had spoke about yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about these different areas and, and, and the types of photography that you like to see in those areas? Yeah, you know, it's funny because, you know, some people might initially think, okay, men's health. Well, they want pictures of big guys with muscles, um, which really isn't the case. Uh, you know, we're not muscle and fitness. We're a lifestyle magazine. And we cover food. We cover technology, fashion. Um, you know, pop culture, uh, we do very conceptual work because we do a lot of stories about, you know, illness and sickness and death. And so we have a lot of conceptual, very kind of highbrow kind of photography there. Um, so I think it's very important for people to actually look inside the magazine and see what's going on um, in order to, you know, pinpoint who they want to work for and who their work might be suited for. We have a couple questions about... Uh... Again, when you're when you're licensing these types of images, uh, for example, with Patrick, um, was he paid a shoot fee in addition to a licensing fee for the usage? And then on the second usage, was he paid another licensing fee at all, or or how does that work with your magazine? That's a good question. Um, in in general, you know, we pay a flat day rate, um, and that will cover usage for the magazine. Yeah, I'm usually I think for the iPad app, although don't quote me on that because it's new, um, and I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure. Um, <laughs> And then generally, yeah, if we end up using a, an image from a shoot for another story, we generally pay our photographers an additional fee for that. Um, and usually that's just a fee based on the page rate. Right, right. Um, we're getting into some of the food photography that you sent over, which always makes me hungry. But uh, mm -hmm. So you said, like, you know, it doesn't look overly lit. It doesn't look overly styled. There's a very real feel to it. So this is would mm -hmm. be very indicative of the type of, of food photography you look for? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't want to say it's not overly, it's not overly lit, but it's definitely, definitely lit. Um, our food photography is, uh, you know, although it's a health magazine, our food, for, our food is, is, we do great food coverage. We work with a lot of great chefs and we have great recipes. And we want our food overall to look really, really abundant um, masculine, delicious, 
uh, and very tactile. So our food isn't overly groomed or you know garnished or perf perfected or you know the plate's not wiped off. In fact, a lot of our food, you know, when we're at food shoots, we we tend to mess it up a little bit. You know, we want it to look real. We want it to look like someone actually just took a bite out of it or pour okay. into it. Um, so it's a fine line, though, between messy and real and appetizing. It's a very fine line. And it's funny when we're on sets because we, as having been doing this for so long, we all kind of know where that line is. And there's a point, there are points where you just reach no return and it's, you're like, oh, God, we got to start over. It's, it's past the line. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we just want it to, to look really, really delicious and, and abundant and masculine. It can't be feminine in the, in the, in the slightest. Bill wants to know whether you have a preference of working directly with a photographer or through an agent. That is a good question, and one I talk with with two photographers all about all the time. Um, working with an agent is good in that you can avoid any sort of uncomfortable discussions about money. Um, you know, when you're working with an agent, you can haggle back and forth about the estimate. You can say, "I'm not, I don't have money for this. I don't have money for that," but you, you can, you know, work it out. With a photographer, you know, when you work with a photographer, you want your relationship to, not that it can't, it, you know, it's not going to be purely artistic, but, you know, you are the client and he is doing a job for you, but you want, it to keep, you want to keep it a little pure and you want to just be able to focus on the job at hand, you know, not all of the financial logistics or, you know, scheduling logistics, although yeah. you are usually actually dealing with a photographer when it comes to, to the scheduling, but um. So I, I do both, you know. I, I have to say for the financial aspects, it's nice to work with an agent and just have that taken care of. But there is also something nice about just calling a photographer directly and being able to bypass sort of the middleman and just um, set it up uh, with them. Yeah, yeah. So a bunch of questions already, and I was, I was holding them off. But uh, take us through the Michelle will read your email if uh, bullet points here. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple a couple of things that might get me to read your email. Um, one is if it actually has my name in it um, and says hi and and um, if it actually well if it's personalized and it actually discusses men's health and you know why they like it and why they think they might be a good fit. Um, especially if they might even reference you know a story or um, a shoot that shows me that they're really, really like wanting to shoot for our magazine and actually know what's going on inside of it rather than just sending out a blast of uh, emails. Yeah. Um, I love when people do send images within the emails um, that catch my attention, especially if they are, uh, you know, something that we might actually run in the magazine because I do get, you know, tons of emails and cards from photographers whose work, you know, we wouldn't really run, which seems sort of like a useless... Uh, I don't know. It's like why send your work to magazines if you're aesthetic or your work really doesn't sort of match up with, with theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and then lately I've been getting these weird emails with the subject line saying we as if it's a reply. And then I, of course, click on it because I think, oh, this is a, an email that I need to answer. And then it turns out to be just a, uh, a promo. And I feel like that's like a weird trick. I don't know if anyone yeah. else is getting those or if it's a new, new tech technique. <laughs> I don't know. Straight to trash for those, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll look. Maybe I'll look. If the image is great, I'll always look. So you were kind enough to actually provide one of the emails that you received that you really liked. And so this is a pretty good indication of the type of image, the size of image, the number of images, et cetera. Yeah. You know, I, these images just caught my eye because they were so bright and um they were sort of like symmetrical and it was like the three guys on the couch, the three guys on the couch. Um, and the colors just sort of jumped out at me and the flash kind of jumped out at me and I was just kind of thinking, what is that? And I wanted to see what it was. Um, you know, this guy might not actually be suited for men's health, but it just got my attention with the brightness and the, you know, lightness of the images. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so very much kind of a, a contemporary look and feel. And, and would you say kind of the, the two images or the three images is, is kind of, you, you should be able to communicate your style in, in, without having 12 images attached? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I look at so many images every day and um, I'm so busy. So anything to streamline would, is great. And I think that if you're, if you're really good at what you do, you should have you know a number of images that truly can sort of represent your 
your style and your work. And I think two to, you know, I think two images is plenty. And that's what I would love to see. Um, here's another one from Lucas Zarabinsky with some yeah, this, beautiful food yeah. photography. Yeah, this is a guy that I've worked with in the past. So we're, we've actually, you know, done work together and, and uh, we are friendly. So he actually does here use my name and, um, this is just a great example of someone saying, you know, I've looked, yeah, I've been, this is what I've been doing, um, it's been going great, and, you know, check it out. And not only including the link, but as I said, including the uh, images in the email. Because, you know, it sounds like it just takes a minute to click on a link, but a lot of times you don't even have that 15 seconds to, to do that. So just having it in front of your face is extremely helpful. So, you know, a lot of people looked at the previous image and they're like, whoa, that doesn't look like such great photography, uh, but, and yet it's sort of indicative of certain types of photography that uh, appear in the magazine. This is obviously food styled, really well lit photography. Um, I guess it's sort of, it, it, it backs up the claim of like, show the type of photography that you would want, that you would see in the magazine, and that's the type of photography that's appropriate to send to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as far as, you know, kind of like the previous um, shots with uh, the the uh, the portraits, although that might not be like the traditional, you know, type of photography we'd, you know, use for like a gigantic fashion story, it might be good for like a portrait of like a young, you know, cool guy. Um, yeah. You're always trying to sort of break the mold and, you know, do different things. Um, so I'm always looking for, you know, younger photographers or greener photographers and even exploring new styles. I mean, I could present something to the creative director here and say, you know, I really like this photographer's work. Is there any place for it in the magazine? He might say absolutely not. Or he might say, that's kind of cool. Like maybe he could do something for us this way or if we asked him to tweak it just a little bit this way, it would totally work. What What is the right uh, frequency with which to email you? If I'm always outputting some you know, decent work? Is it monthly, weekly, quarterly? Um, it's definitely not weekly. Um, <laughs> I would say, I would say every couple months, you know, maybe every every two or three months, I think is fine. I think cool. two months is good. Um, so now we move away from the email and now we move into the website, the, the, the things that catch your eye. And we hear so much of the same thing from all of the like the professional photo editors and buyers about easy to navigate, quick to load, no intros and no music. So mm -hmm. there must be something to that. Well, you know, it's, honestly, it's just like we are looking at so many different websites and a lot of times grabbing images from websites because we need to show them to a group of people or we just need to access them very quickly. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just you need photographers just need to streamline their website so that they're very very easy to use and really intuitive, um, and that there's not just not a lot of bells and whistles. Um, you know, I like to see the images big. I like to also have the option of um, uh, what's the what's the I'm blinking. What's the little word when they're um, the images are tiny? Contact like the, like the contact sheet. The yeah. thumbnails exactly. Sorry. <laughs> Um, because that way, you know, you can scroll quickly through the thumbnails and, and um, click on, you know, the ones you want to see then make them, you know, to make them larger. Oh, um, so, about... yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, I was just going to talk about tear sheets. Yeah, people are asking, what's a tear sheet? Um, why don't you explain a, what it is first? Um, sure. A tear sheet is just basically... Uh, the layout in the magazine in which the photograph ran. So rather than just publishing the photograph alone, they published the actual page from the magazine showing how the image was incorporated into the layout. And that is just a great way for, I think, photo editors to see um, just how the, how the images turned out to be a success. Um, and it can be sort of inspiring uh, to just see how great something looks uh, in a magazine and uh, make you kind of want to, you know, work with that person. Um, it's just, so, uh, I don't know, it's just great to have the image in context. Yeah, this is one of my favorite and I, obviously one of your favorites as well, Andrew Hetherington. Um, mm -hmm. Nice big territory. I mean, this guy's in like every magazine every month, it feels yeah. like. 
Yeah, he's he shoots a lot for everyone, and um, his website's great. I just I like the categories, you know, that he divides his work up into. Um, I like uh, that his blog. He has a blog that's pretty well read, and that's on there. And it's just very simple and and easy to navigate. It's all right there on the left, and you can just kind of scroll through. Um, question: You know, you mentioned a little bit uh, a few minutes ago about how. You know, you like to drag and drop images from a person's website, and then of course the photographers are saying, "Hey, what about copyright infringement?" Can you explain how comps are used in the magazine world? Oh, sure, sure. Um, well, usually when I'm dragging images from the website, it's just to to show people or print out and show. But if, um, yeah, I mean, like, do you mean like if we want to use an image in a layout just to see how it would look? Yeah, I guess uh, just for the audience's understanding, you know, people are, you know, some photographers say I'm going to disable the drag and drop capability or I'm going to use Flash because I don't want people stealing my images. And yet it seems oh, like I see. in the world where you actually license images properly, that is a that is like a non-negotiable convenience factor almost. It feels like. Um, I guess so. I mean, the thing with with dragging and dropping, those those are really low quality JPEG, so it's not like we could even ever run anything because it wouldn't be high resolution enough. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I get that though for like blogs and stuff. I I know there's an issue with a lot of bloggers, you know, photo bloggers taking images from website and reposting them, and um, um, I can see how that would definitely be a concern with copyright yeah. issues. Here's a, another website, johnloomis.com, um, and similarly yeah, kind of yeah. large images, beautiful, bright images. Yeah, and his, his, his website, I guess, is a little different in that his categories over there on the left are, um, you know, you, you kind of don't even know what they are. So this sort of contradicts <laughs> actually my, <laughs> totally contradicts what I said I really do like in a website. Um, so this is sort of an anomaly, but I actually just really love John's work. And um, I like the, I, I'm like, what is Dirty Dozen? And then I click on Dirty Dozen and it's these beautiful still lights of oysters. And it's funny because John oh. Loomis, I, I really just use him for portraits and stuff and even shooting athletes. So it's nice to see these sort of little surprises. Um, He's also, I know him, and he's very well established and very good, so this kind of website, I wouldn't say, you know, oh, he should be, you know, a lot clearer and, and have the clearer categories. I really actually like this one, but, um, and, and, the, and just the images pop up easily. They're, they're each, you know, separated into like a story or a series, and then you have the next button where you can just see all of them very easily. They load really fast, and uh, I like that a lot. We're getting a lot of questions about whether you kind of exclusively work with photographers from New York or maybe LA. What's sort of the geographical dispersion? And and I guess also since there's so many different editions, you know, international editions of the magazine, are those completely separate editorial staffs as well? Yeah. Um, as far as location of photographers, we generally do tend to work with people in New York or LA. And I think this is mainly because we actually we actually go to most of our shoots. Uh, some, uh, I don't know, some photo editors, I think, don't go to the actual shoots, but we do. Um, we, we're very sort of um, involved in, in the art direction uh, on set. So being in New York, we shoot a lot in New York, and of course all of, a lot of the celebrity stuff gets shot in LA, and sometimes we fly out there for that. Um, sometimes we have people that need to be shot in the middle of the country or you know places other than New York or LA, and for that purpose, we do use regional photographers, and um, like you know, PhotoServe on PDN is a great source that I've used in the past to look up you know photographers in the Chicago area, and yeah. I've found and assigned a lot of people using PhotoServe. Um, and then just over the years, I've met you know people from other places that have been in New York for meetings, and maybe they're from Portland or maybe they're from Miami or whatever it is, and. Um, just kind of on my radar know that, you know, oh, this guy's here, this girl's there. Uh, so we do use regional photographers, but absolutely, we tend to use more people from New York and LA for sure. And in terms of the, the other editions of the magazines, are those different uh, editorial staffs? Yeah, those are totally different editorial staffs. Um, however, sometimes, sometimes there will be, maybe there's a really big celebrity that we're shooting for the cover of one whether it's like the UK edition or, or you know, wh whichever edition, and we'll use 
that imagery and for you know the US edition for like a feature on the inside so we we rarely cross over but sometimes we do share stories um, Levi Brown talk about having some good tear sheets here he's got some covers some some inside articles yeah. as well what do you like about this guy I love Levi's work and we work with him a lot um, he can kind of do anything he's sort of a magician uh, but it's not magic. He's he's really really talented. Um, he shoots food for us. He shoots uh, conceptual stuff. Um, he's just really inventive, and uh, I love his. I included his website here just because it's so clean, and I just I really like it. This is a great example of something that's just shining the light on the quality of the work um, in a very you know streamlined and simple way. I was thinking, you know, when I was looking at these images, I've never seen aluminum foil photographed so beautifully before. Right. And I was kind it's of, exactly. I wanted to like try it. I was like, oh, I wonder how many lights are there and flags and, you know, it's not so yeah. easy to make an image like that. Yeah, and that's the thing about him. He, he can really make, you know, any sort of object just really look special. Nigel Cox has some food images here, but clearly there is some compositing going on as well. Um, you're not a journalistic, yeah. you're not a photojournalism magazine, magazine, so that's probably irrelevant. Can you talk about this style of photography? Um, I, I think I just put Nigel's website on there because um, I really liked his website. Um, and he's just like a master lighter, um, and he's just incredible. Um, this type of photography, I mean, I guess there's always some comp compositing going on in still life photography. You'd be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, at all of the composite going on, especially in food photography. So it's certainly not unusual. Um, and it's kind of fun to be on set and see all of the sort of variation of images and then <laughs> sort of seeing all the layers uh, go in Photoshop to make the uh, the final image. Yeah. Do you, you know, we, we have a, a few questions about whether you uh, are receptive to photographers pitching you on ideas and stories, or is the editorial calendar pretty much set? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, we, I, I've never, um, I, I've had a couple of people pitch me stories or ideas or even people to profile, and I can say that we've never taken them up on it. Um, you know, we have a very uh, consistent brand, and we have editors here who, you know, work really hard and do a wonderful job at coming up with relevant stories and coverage of, you know, popular and relevant people and just people who, you know, would fit in with our brand. And um, we don't really stray from, from our editorial formula. Uh, you know, some ideas people pitch might seem good and they probably would be great, but we just generally, it's, it's just not going to happen. I always had a suspicion. Um, you know, because in the in the past we've run print ads in various magazines, and in a lot of the advertising kits, they they show you what the adver what the editorial calendar is, so that you can say, oh, I'm a, I'm a wedding service, and so I'm going to be a part of the wedding issue. Do mm -hmm. you think it's a good idea from a photographer pitching, like if they go to your ad advertising kit and they see, oh, story on rugby, I have rugby photos. Hey, Michelle, I see in six months you're doing rugby stuff. Here's three of my best rugby images. Is that a decent way to go about it or does it not matter? That's an interesting way to go about it, absolutely. I never really thought of that, but you, you really <laughs> never know. Like if you, if, 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 if I knew we were doing a rugby issue and, um, you know, I knew upcoming that I was going to either have to do a rugby shoot or I was going to have to research, do photo research to find like the best rugby images and they just show up in my inbox, um, then great. Like I'll definitely take a look at them and I'll look at your work. So that's, that's actually kind of a smart, a smart thing to do. I mean, you never know, right? Hey, hey, I have a few good ideas every once in a while. Yeah. That's good to hear. <laughs> I like that one, yeah. Um, so here's a typical cover, and it seems like a lot of the covers you have this style of shooting on the white seamless, um, mm -hmm. not not too shadowy, pretty well, well lit, good contrast, etc. Why don't you take us through what you look for on a cover image? Well, our, our cover images are I, I don't want to say formulaic, but they, 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 you know, they do have a formula, and it's um, men's health is a brand, and we want to keep our brand very consistent. Um, our readers expect, you know, a certain, you know, a certain brand and a certain. There's just a brand recognition that we really, really need to um, continue and keep consistent for our readers. So, 
you know, our guys generally wear, you know, shirts in sort of these muted tones, whether it's grays or blues or blacks. Um, they usually wear, you know, a pair of jeans that are, you know, we don't, just kind of all American, you know, they're not going to have some sort of crazy embellishment or anything like that. And then right. style-wise, I mean, for, as far as the posing, there's a whole, I think it's almost scientific at this point, um, series of poses that we put our guys through, poses and stances. And we do it with the same, you know, the same poses for every guy. And uh, it just kind of, it works for us. And, of course, we have the red, you know, men's health logo against the white back, background. And um, that's sort of, that's our, our, our strong brand that we have just kept going, you know, throughout these years. And it's been really successful for us. You were mentioning something really interesting that I hadn't really considered before, um, but that a lot, since you, you frequently feature a celebrity or a pretty well-known person on the cover, that a lot of cases the publicists will want to use a specific photographer. So the chances of no-name photographers shooting for the cover are close to nil, effectively, right? That's true, um, and it's it's for a couple of reasons. I mean, one, obviously, it's a, it's a it's a cover. It's probably the most important shoot. They're expensive. We generally don't have very much time at all with our cover subjects, so it's really important to have a very seasoned professional who has done this numerous times before, who can schmooze with publicists, who can create a rapport with the subject, and, you know, just create a very uh, comfortable and jovial set, um, on-set environment um, and, and feeling. And, uh, yeah, these publicists, you know, sometimes they want to push a photographer who has a relationship already with the cover subject, which, you know, we understand sometimes, you know, we want the cover subject to be comfortable and to have a good time and to be into the shoot. Um, so, but we, you know, we push back if it's someone that we don't want to use. Um, yeah. And generally, you know, we use who we want to use. And, and generally, a lot of these guys have shot our celebrities previously. So sometimes it just works out like that. Here is uh, one of those beautiful women. Uh, mm -hmm. Was this pickup or was it commissioned for this type of shot? Yeah. This was pickup. There's a, there are a couple of um, stock sites that have great what we call sexy girl pickup. Um, it's actually this makes the pick desk, which is an Australian uh, site, and we get a lot of our imagery from them. Um, you know, we don't run pickup of girls with really with like fake boobs or a lot of plastic surgery. You know, they're don't they're, they're not Playboy models. We we tend to run girls in the magazine again that are would appeal to our readership, which. Um, you know, so we, we try to make these girls look somewhat approachable, like, you know, I want to say girl next door, real girls. Um, they're not too skinny. They haven't had plastic surgery, but they're definitely beautiful. And uh, Pick Desk seems to just have a lot of imagery like that, using uh, models like that. So for, for the pickup, and, and just a clarification for people didn't hear before, pickup refers to stock images, effectively, things exactly. that are commissioned. Um, mm -hmm. When you're dealing with pickup, are you always going just to the agencies, or do you ever deal with photographers directly who you know specialize in a certain type of stock imagery? I do um, sometimes deal specifically with uh, photographers who I think might have something I'm looking for. Um, and then in that case, I'll just shoot shoot them an email or call them and say, you know, I'm looking for an image of this. Do you have anything like that? Um, right. And that's just a matter of kind of knowing what people have shot in the past and what their styles are and, and you know, or, you know, just seeing if they have something in their, in their archives. Um, this next photo from the uh, I Hate Fat People article was mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. favorites in terms of the, the comedic element there. Why don't you tell <laughs> us about the conception to the, to the actual production of this shoot? Yeah, um, so once in a while we have a moment in the magazine to do something kind of just funny and humorous and uh, uh, like a, just a really fun moment. And um, this is a story about uh, overweight people and, uh, you know, in our country and is it a drain on our, our resources and the healthcare system and all that. But we're like, how can we, you know, take this and just kind of, you know, use the moment visually to inject some humor into the magazine. So we came up with this idea of sort of a skinny kind of wimpy guy being sort of burdened or put upon by uh, overweight people. And we hired a, we hired Troy Lilligrav to, to do this for us, to shoot it. He's, he's great and um, has a great sense of humor. And um, we hired a producer out in LA to show us locations and to cast models, which means basically, you know, she would show us the locations. She would do a casting pool and show and send us, you know, galleries of people 
and then at the magazine we would sort of pick who we wanted to be in the shoot and the producer would cast them and you know put it all together and then uh, we came up with some scenarios uh, you know I came up with some Tori came up with some and then we just made sure we had a location that could uh, lend itself to that. So we made sure we had an elevator. We made sure we had like a revolving door because we did a shot where they're both trying to go through a revolving door. Um, we utilized a bench. And uh, that was just a great sort of really hilarious day. And the actors were all really gracious and great about <laughs> so in this, poked fun at. In this sort of uh, situation where it is kind of a highly produced shoot, who, who is actually responsible for the production and the casting, et cetera? Does it vary by shoot? It does vary by shoot. Something this uh, large, because this is just sort of larger scale shoot, as you said, we have a produ we've had a producer in LA that we hired independently to to work on this, and then I would work with her um, on it just to make sure that you know we had this that the things were approved on our end, I guess, in terms of like how we wanted it styled and who the stylist was, and that we made sure the models were all approved. Um, and then I just went out there for the shoot, and my job is really to sort of make sure that the aesthetic and the attitude of the magazine is translated um, into pictures. Gotcha. Um, here is uh, the 15 minute workout and I, f I believe this was also pickup, a guy in a canoe mm -hmm. uh, looking yeah. beefy and having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, you know, we could, certainly can't afford to do, go out and do a whole outdoor, you know, nautical or, you know, sports photo shoot to run one image. So. We pick up a lot of these images that involve, you know, sports or outdoor activities in really beautiful places. And there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, and this guy, he's very, very much sort of the men's health guy. He's fit, he's good looking, um, but he's not like a gigantic, huge like bodybuilder type. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he, his clothes are even a little, like the perfect amount of fashionable. You know, he doesn't look like a total schlub. But uh, he looks like he just looks kind of like a real dude. Maybe he's a little, maybe he's a little more good-looking and a little more fashionable. <laughs> but generally, but generally, we we try to pick guys that you can, you know, might somewhat be able to relate to, or at least aspire to in a realistic way. That's funny. Um, uh, when when you're using pickup uh, in the magazine, are you putting the photo credit kind of in the in the inner uh, binding sleeve there? Yeah, we have it's called the gutter, um, and the that's gutter. where we put the credits. It's in the yeah, in the binding, uh, basically, in of the magazine. So it's uh, I guess in terms of you know photographers trying to educate them as to what's a produced shoot, what's a commission shoot versus uh, pickup slash stock. Just kind of looking at the photo credits, a pretty good indication because you are referencing the agency that you're getting the photo from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. It'll say you know. I, you know, it'll say, you know, John Smith slash Getty Images. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a single, oh, no, I think you said this was actually a multi-page story. I love, I love this image. Why don't you kind of take us through why this wasn't yeah. a pickup? Um, so we had um, Lucas, who I, that, that he had sent me that email that I, I sent you. <clears throat> we had him shoot this because this is not just a one-page story. This was a, what was called a department, which is, uh, maybe a two to three page story. So we have more money to spend on these shoots. Which So when we have more money for the pages, we try to shoot things. And, you know, <clears throat> yeah, you could have, you know, I could have gone to Getty or gone to a stock agency and there's a, probably a million cups of coffee available to run. But we wanted something really beautiful and special. And I think this image is really special. Um, I think it's really special because of the lighting. I think it's really special because of just like the, the focus on the drips and how they're sort of just so. Um, even the movement in the puddle is really special and the foam itself, I don't remember if he composited that and kind of added some more foam, but I think it's just a really nuanced picture and there's a difference between, you know, a beautiful and cool and a resting image of coffee and one that's just an image of coffee. Right, right. Um, some Here's some fashion. We have here environmental fashion, I guess we could call it. Yeah, I guess so. This is, I, I guess, the inside of our the cover. So um, we generally shoot them. We try to shoot our the inside just kind of looking cool and being active in some way. Sometimes it's um, our cover subjects actually do a very specific workout or they're athletes or they're training. Other times they're actors who happen to be fit. So we just kind of get them in some environment and 
have them, you know, just moving around in some way or interacting with the environment. Um, here's a product shot, and and earlier, obviously, this is this is a very nice product shot. But earlier, uh, someone had asked whether you do any photography in house um, for simple product oh. shots. We do, and and actually, so this isn't this actually this isn't a product shot. It's this is actually just more of a conceptual shot. I mean, those are products, but we're not showcasing them as products. Right. Um, but um, we actually do have an in-house photo studio. Um, it seems like a lot of magazines these days do. I think it's pretty cost efficient. Ours is ba is um, actually based in Pennsylvania, where our our a large part of our company is based, and we do have them shoot a lot of the smaller items for us. If we have a story, um, let's say, like that coffee story, that might have been the, the main image of coffee, might have been you know the main image, but then we might have had a sidebar on different kinds of coffee beans. And maybe we had three different kinds of coffee beans that ran an inch by an inch. We might have our photo studio do those for us. Mm -hmm. In the case of that coffee shot, you know, we, we, we were talking a little bit about consistency and when you have a multi-page spread, um, visually, you might not be able to find, you know, three high-quality images illustrating the same thing. So that would that would clearly be one reason why you'd want to commission. But when you're when you're doing sort of that, uh, you know, a three-page departmental story or something, are you always commissioning the photography, or do you do you start with the stock search? No, we we don't always start with the stock search. We generally like to com commission as much as we can. And when we're going through the line up and looking at all the stories and seeing where, what we're going to shoot and what we're not going to shoot. Um, you know, if we have a story about coffee and we have a, a three-page story about coffee and a three-page story about hamburgers and then a three-page story about girls, you know, about a sex and a relationship thing, we're generally going to shoot the, still, the coffee story and the hamburger story because we can shoot beautiful images, you know, in a non-expensive way. Oh, I'm sorry, not non-expensive, but less expensive than shooting you know, a sexy girl for a three-page story because a sexy girl shoot costs way more than a, uh, a still life shoot. Um, also As a function of getting the model and the stylist and the hairstylist and the makeup artist, et cetera? Yeah. More moving parts? Yeah. More moving parts. Locations for those kinds of things are really, really outrageously expensive. A photo studio might cost you $1,000. A location for a shoot like that might cost you $2,500. Yeah, yeah. Um, some more food shots, man. I'm gonna have to go eat after this yeah. webinar. Is, yeah, this is over. This is an example of, of you know kind of that light for bright lighting and see all that juice around, uh, showing kind of a little bit of mess. I don't even want to call it mess, but it's just an element to sort of draw the reader in, and it's sort of very tactile and it's wet, and it hopefully will make you salivate and hungry and want to eat that steak. Now, in in the lower left corner, I see a little it looks like a breakfast sandwich or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so is that something that would have been stock, or was that actually uh, commissioned? That, well? That's actually, that's something that we have our, stu our photo studio shoot in Pennsylvania. Because, ah. um, you know, our magazine, our fact checkers are serious, and, and uh, if they are talking about, what is this, like a McDonald's sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddle, then we have to show that, and we can't fake it. So, you know, we'll have someone from the uh, photo studio usually go pick up that stuff and try to get it to the photo studio and maybe spruce it up a little bit so it actually looks appetizing, like maybe they'll mm -hmm. replace the cheese. But um, that's a real product. But fair to say there is a visible difference in the quality of photography, or am I just making things up? I mean, the pork chop looks oh, oh, and, like a much oh, better photo. Saying. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, no offense yeah, to the in-house staff of oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. And, and those food court crimes, I mean, that's it's also a matter of you know saying almost don't eat this you know that's what we're yeah. saying about yeah. that image so it almost makes sense you know we're saying you know meat is actually good for you it can be delicious and nutritious it has all these benefits and we make it look good and then you know you have this image of a you know something else that's not good for you and and so you know it doesn't look as appealing um, linguine with bacon and clam with the, the dripping butter off of the noodle there. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this is a short order cook, and this is a one page that we do every month. So what we'll do is shoot maybe five of these um, at one photo shoot. Um, and that way, you know, we have five in the bank ready to go, and uh, it's cost efficient that way. 
um, more more pasta. I mean, I, I mean, I keep saying it, but I'm really getting hungry while I'm yeah. <laughs> looking Good. at this. <laughs> then I've done my job. Exactly. That's great. Um, um, I really, more. yeah. Pieces of linguine there. Mm -hmm. So this, mm -hmm. uh, here's the exploding linguine. It's like somebody threw it in the air and maybe composited different pieces together. Oh, that's funny. Actually, this was shot on, I think, a light box. So it's actually looking Just down. sitting there? Yeah. Huh. That's funny. I never looked at it that the way that you just said, but now that you said that, I, I see it in a different way. Maybe it's just in the air. I'm hungry. It wants to like go in my mouth or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. So uh, here, Andrew Carminelli, one of my favorite New York chefs. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice uh, pork chop there. Um, so this is both kind of a food shot as well as an environmental portrait. Yeah, um, we profile a lot of chefs, and in that case, we need a person that can do both really awesome portraits as well as you know environmental food shots. And this one, we had Joao Canzioni, who's great. Um, and he he did this for us, and he's just one of those people who, you know, shoots the details in a beautiful way. And sometimes the details, the detail shots, what we call like that ingredient shot right there, can end up being the best shots. You know? Yeah. So um, details are really important. We have a couple questions from people in regards to, you know, do you ever shoot? Um, and, and almost kind of with a, it feels like a little bit of a acerbic tone from the from the audience in some ways. Do you ever shoot old people? Do you ever shoot not as attractive people? And I guess maybe if you can explain what aspirational means from the men's health standpoint and what the what the target demographic is for this magazine. Sure. Um, do we ever shoot old people? Um, we do. Like we just did a story on on Garrison Ke Garrison Keeler. Um, and it was a story about a stroke that he had had, and we did a whole feature on on, on him, on, on strokes, and we had a full-page portrait um, of him. I mean, generally, you know, our readers are between, I don't know, I guess I'd say eight, anywhere from 18 up to, you know, 40s. Um, so I wouldn't say we focus on older people, although we do sometimes have uh, stories on, you know, men at different ages. Um, but in yeah. general, no, we keep our subjects to, you know, our, the same ages as our demographic. And as far as good looking people, I mean, I think anyone, when you open up a magazine, you want to, you know, you're looking at it for ideas and for inspiration. And I feel like uh, you want to see people that you might be able to, you know, aspire to, to look like or to, you know, be successful as. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to, you know, we tend not to run pictures of super overweight people except for that one story that we just looked at. Yeah. Um, we like our guys to be fit, and uh, we think that our readers uh, appreciate that and, and want to, you know, aspire to that. Um, here is a great, just nice picture of a uh, summer baseball. Mm -hmm. um, was was this pickup? I believe this was pickup. Unfortunately, I can't see the credit very clearly, but um, I'm pretty sure that this was uh, pickup. Yes, but the food we shot. Yeah, and then we're running out of time, so unfortunately, I have to move quickly through the the girls. But here's here's a uh, a commission set of uh, images of of a girl in a bikini. Mm -hmm. Um, and and what's sort of involved with this this type of shoot? Who's responsible for the casting? How many people do you have on set for this typical feature? We have um, a West Coast editor who what we also call a celebrity wrangler, I guess, and um, they sort of present to us, they're, you know, they're involved, they're in, in communication with all the publicists in Hollywood, and they sort of know who's up and coming, who's hot, who has movies coming out, who has projects going on, and then they pitch us uh, their clients. So, you know, this girl was in uh, Friday Night Lights, and she's super cute. Um, and we had a producer out in LA, and we just got a location, a house in LA with a pool, and it was a summer issue, so we wanted to, you know, do bathing suits. And you know, we just had a stylist come. We got a ton of bathing suits, and we just kind of had a day of um, dressing up in the bathing suits and taking some great pictures. And how far in oh, advance yeah. are you are you shooting for an issue? Is it like three um, months in advance, six months in advance? It's it's usually yeah I'd say two to three months in advance. For example, right now what is it mid November and we're shoot we just started on our March 
issue, but we also did a double January-February issue. So we're finishing January-February right now. So it's usually, you know, about two months. Uh, and then a straight portrait here of Neil Strauss. Yeah, this is a, a portrait we did in LA, and um, you know we have this really masculine kind of bar with uh, you know the leathers and the the brown colors, and you know a sort of typical of a, a kind of aesthetic that we would like to see in the magazine, something very masculine and and but you know classy. So I'm just going to go through some of these. Uh, I guess this is actually the the last image. So actually, a black and white portrait here with a shallow focus seems very different from from a lot of the other things that we saw but a beautiful image nonetheless yeah sometimes Peter Yang shot this and he's incredible an incredible portrait photographer and um Idris is also just such a he's I have to say he's a really gorgeous good-looking man and um so I think he covered a lot of things he did you know portraits of him in the environment sort of interacting with he was on a roof in that shot interacting with the roof and then you know just doing his thing and I love that we ended up running a black and white we don't run a lot of black and white so that's a, a really nice moment to have in there and I think he looks really strong and powerful and elegant is, is that something you know when when you have like a black and white portrait that that might not be as typical uh, for the magazine is that something that you're going to the editor of the magazine and saying hey let's let's really try to run this photo it's a great photo are you going to bat for the photographer or the image? Yeah, definitely, definitely. If the photographer, you know, submits the edit to me and says, "Oh God, you know, I really love this in black and white," um, and I do too, then when I show it to my creative director, or art director, I'll say, "You know, don't you really love this?" So it would be great to be able to run it. And sometimes it just depends on, you know, someone's mood or the balance of the color and brightness in the current issue. Um, and it depends, like, what stories are around it. I mean, it's it, it's just it's funny what can determine whether or not you ultimately will be able to run something in black and white. Right. It's kind right. of a crapshoot. Well, we've gone a few minutes over, but I blame it on myself for the technical difficulty <laughs> up front. But Michelle, I want to thank you so much for spending the hour with us and giving us all of this valuable information. Michelle Stark from Men's Health Magazine, um, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. It was fun. I hope I, I uh, gave you some good information. Um, we will have the recording of this webinar up for you in the next day or two on blog.photoshelter.com. And just to let you know, the next buyer webinar will be on Tuesday, December 6th with Steve Fine, the uh, Director of Photography at Sports Illustrated. Um, you're not going to remember this URL, so just go to photoshelter.com slash about slash webinar to see our list of webinars. And the other thing that we want to remind you of is that we have a photo business boot camp and you can just go to photoshelter.com slash mkt slash bootcamp will work as well or photo-business-bootcamp to get a lot of information about how to supercharge your photo uh, business. So thanks once again to Michelle Stark and thanks to everyone who joined us today and we will see you online. Thank you very much. Thanks.